Good morning, adventures. Good morning. From Michigan. Woo! We made it. We're we here. Did. So this is a state that we've only dipped our toes in. We've only been to the very southern point of Michigan, and we have been dying to explore more of the state. And for years and years, people have been telling us, you got to get up to the Upper Peninsula. Yeah. So our goal is to road trip from the east all the way over to the west. We're going to squeeze in as much incredible nature as we can, try a lot of delicious foods along the way, especially some seafood, which they're known for. It's going to be a blast, y'all. We cannot wait. We've got our trusty Black Series camper that we've been hauling around that is going to be our home during our travels through the Upper Peninsula. In case you missed that, we actually recently gave you all a tour of this camper that we are using while Clementine is sadly in the shop. But it's pretty baller, y'all, and it is an off-road machine, yeah. and we are hoping to take it off-road on Hopefully. this trip. All right, we got everything battened down in here, so we're going to head up to the truck and head to the UP. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Bring on the views. <laughs> First things first on our trip, we have to get up to the Upper Peninsula, and that means we have to cross the Mackinac Bridge, baby. The bridge connects the mainland to the Upper Peninsula. It's only five miles long, but that's really long going over a bunch of water. Yeah, it feels really long. The bridge was initially opened in 1957, and the construction cost was $100 million, but in today's money, that's $717 million. <laughs> so it's a very, very expensive bridge. I even read that it takes seven years to repaint, and what they do is they start it and seven years later they finish it and then they immediately restart so it's in a constant <laughs> state of being painted <laughs> it's like almost a eggshell or a warm yellow color yeah it's very nice but the bridge has a little bit of a dark past a couple cars have actually driven off the bridge and I even read that a plane was in heavy fog and it ran into the cables and it clipped both of the wings off of it Sadly, they died too. So it's not all uh, sunshine and rainbows on this bridge. And it's crazy. One of the lanes is graded and you can actually see directly down to the water. <laughs> Some people opt to stay on the paved part. <laughs> yeah, I think I like the paved part a lot better. I don't need to know how far I would have to fall to my death. All right, we're officially in the Upper Peninsula. Let the adventures begin. arrived at our first stop in the Upper Peninsula and it is already completely blowing us away. This is Taquamenon Falls. Hopefully I'm saying it right. There was a sign up there that said it kind of sounded like Phenomenon. Taquamenon? <laughs> That's gotta be right, right? Seems right to me. The falls are so much more grand in person than I thought that they would be and you get to get up nice, close and personal with them. What makes it so unique is it's this rich brown color and it falls into the bottom and just creates all this epic foam that just squashes up into the air and floats downstream. So they actually used to do logging in this river, but it really wasn't suitable for logging until they stuck a bunch of dynamite in it, blew it up, and then kind of made it a little bit deeper so the logs could get through. And then they would go from the upper river down to the lower river. Can you imagine just seeing a bunch of logs flying through all this? <laughs> These falls are some of the prettiest I have ever seen, y'all. It looks like falling molasses or something, or amber. It's so pretty, and I guess it's colored that way from tannins from fallen trees in a swamp upstream. Also, there is this crazy foam monster floating on top of the water down below, and every once in a while, the wind whips up and blows the foam up into the air. It is way cool to watch. It looks like a living organism. It does. It looks like it's going to come, like, rise up and take over. So this area is huge. This is actually a whole state park. You know, you could spend days and days here. We you don't have days and days, though. No, you can camp here, but it's Labor Day weekend, and we, uh, didn't book anything in advance, so everything is filled up. But if you do come, these are the upper falls, but there are also lower falls that are smaller, but really pretty. Sorry we're short of breath. There were like 94 steps to get up off of yeah. that viewing area. <laughs> but yes, if you come here, plan on spending a few days if you can. And obviously we're not gonna get to everything, so if you spend a lot of time up here in Michigan or if you're from Michigan, feel free to let the tips fly for everybody else in yeah. the description below, or in the comments below, not the description. That's for us. Yeah, we'll take care of the description. <laughs> Oh my word, y'all. There is a brewery at the falls. Oopsie doopsie. 
just what we needed after that little hike up the stairs. Cheers. Cheers. Surprisingly, this place isn't just a tourist trap. They have these big tanks in the back and they have four different beers that they actually brew here. And they have some legit food. Check this out. This is the broiled white fish. And then we got some little vegetables on the side and some french fries. Oh man. <laughs> I was expecting to have to eat like a hot dog or something. We've been eating a lot of fish on this trip and I foresee eating a lot more because <laughs> it's so good up here. And of course, very, very low. Thank you. And I fumble through my closet for my clothes and find my cleanest, dirty shirt. I wash my face and comb my hair and stumble down the stairs to me. Yo, we were just driving down the road and we saw this handwritten sign that said Cuddle Puppies. Turns out this is a summer sled dog center and they should have sledding dogs and puppies that we get to interact with. Might be the makings for the best day of my entire life. <laughs> Maybe we'll adopt one? What do you think? Absolutely. You just pick the one you want, honey. <laughs> okay! <laughs> These are eight weeks old. Okay. Hi. Oh, Sparrow. Hi, Sparrow. Oh my gosh. I feel like you're equally sleepy and playful. Oh, you come here. Come sit down with me. Here. Oh. You want a puppy? <laughs> are five months old. The ones we were just playing with are only eight weeks. So three months makes this much difference. Yeah. Also, interesting fact, these are Alaskan Huskies, not Siberian Huskies like you would normally think of. <laughs> well, that was a completely unplanned stop, but a complete delight. A must do, I yeah. would say. Yeah, and we can recommend um, it's called My Dog, and we just randomly drove by it, and we were like, wait a minute, did that say Cuddle Puppies? <laughs> but if you're in the area, can recommend. And the people there are super nice, obviously. So nice, and you learn all about sled dog racing. It was very eye-opening, because we actually went to the start of the Iditarod years ago in Alaska, and we had no idea. All we knew that the dogs were yipping, and they wanted to run. But that stop cost us a little bit of time, so we are in a hurry to get to our next spot for the day. Y'all, if you can believe it, we are actually fitting in one more adventure today. There is a whole coastline around here filled with these very interesting rock formations, and we are about to get up close and personal with them. You guys, we accidentally held up the whole boat. It's six o'clock on the dot. We got here at like 5.58 yeah. and came running, and they were already backing off. Yeah, whoopsie. I feel like a bit of an A. -hole. to the middle of Lake Superior, and we are headed out to find some very interesting rock formations. They line the coastline, and there are many beaches that you can walk along and hiking trails, but I argue that the best way to see them is out in the water. So we have booked ourselves a sunset cruise. These rock formations are so cool. It looks like watercolors seeping out and apparently that's like the water within the water table oozing out and all these different minerals come out and cause all these different colors on the rock. There's also a bunch of areas where they have these rock slides and you can see where the rocks just crumble away and they've happened very recently. I guess what happens is when the ice forms, it forms like a wedge within the rocks and kind of chisels it off of the rock face. So that's why you see collapsed rocks all along the coastline. He just drove the boat into this cove and man, you can really get a close up look at the rocks and look how green the water is. And it's crystal clear. Yeah. Yeah, you can see right down to the sandy bottom down there. It's pristine. Apparently, Lake Superior is the size of all the other four Great Lakes. So it is the largest. It also contains 10% of the world's fresh water. The rest of the lakes contain another 10%. So in total, 20% baby. A lot more fresh water than I thought these lakes were holding. In fact, our captain said that that's enough water to have a five foot deep swimming pool that covers the entire US. Are you getting the point? It's a lot of water, y'all. <laughs> you 
you guys will never guess what the UP is known for. They've got their own version of a pasty. Holy cow, this is dense. <laughs> this is like a weight. <laughs> you could work out with this thing. We became very familiar with pasties when we visited Cornwall. That is more or less where they're from. Over there, it's called the Cornish pasty. It's a little bit different than this. It's more kind of like a half moon and it has more of like a handle on one side. This is pretty similar. This is a bit more stuffed, I think. <laughs> Very um, Americanized version, yeah. it seems. <laughs> Miners would take these and they would eat them for lunch. And the reason for that is that they have this nice little doughy handle so that they could grab it here and not get it all dirty and then eat it like this. The ones in England are a bit more ergonomic for that use, I think. These ones are just like a ball of deliciousness. <laughs> you have to like unhinge your jaw to take <laughs> yeah. a bite of that. I don't, I mean, they give you a fork, but I'm gonna eat it with my hands. <laughs> so this is the traditional, it's just gonna be beef and veggies in there. That was a big bite. Holy cow, check that out, y'all. Woohoo! It's got a very thin layer of dough in there. It's really all about the filling. Lots of potatoes, delicious beef flavor. Super savory, of course. Might need a nap after this. <laughs> a lot of food. Y'all, I went with the chicken version and they recommended to get it with their chicken gravy. So you know what that means. Slow motion food porn income. <laughs> Oh my word, y'all, this got a little ridiculous. Went a little crazy with the gravy. It smells like Thanksgiving dinner though. I'm well, so excited. Okay. <laughs> my mouth isn't this big. Good luck. <laughs> this looks like a donut covered in icing. I did not get this gravy off my face. That is like a whole chicken roast dinner in there with the gravy on there. Oh gosh, that was a perfect addition. Pasty cheers, give some that gravy, cheers. that's my one. <laughs> well, they did recommend putting ketchup on the traditional, so we'll have to try that next. We are in the town of Munising, and we came to Muldoon's to get our pasties today. According to the sign up there, they were voted number one pasty. However, you can get pasties all over the Upper Peninsula, and there's actually another shop in town called Miner's Pasties, so they get rave reviews as well. So maybe try both if you got the time. I know I would if we weren't just about to leave. <laughs> so it's been quite a while since we were in England eating pasties, but these ones were just as good as the ones that we remember. So much so that we actually got a couple for takeaway. Y'all, they sell them cold and frozen, so you can eat them later on. Oh my God, my belly is gonna be so happy about this decision. But of course there is so much more to see. So we are headed deeper into the UP. Self. Next time, leave the hat in the car. <laughs> We have officially arrived in our favorite campsite so far in Michigan, y'all. This is the Bay Ridge RV Park. It sits on Garden Bay in Lake Michigan. Who baby, are the views amazing yeah, here. Yeah, we got lakefront property now. We always wanted lakefront property, now we got it. <laughs> and now we got it, it only cost us like 50 bucks. They even have a restaurant on the water that you can see from the campsite and walk to, which is where we had dinner tonight. One thing you'll quickly realize if you're traveling in a camper like us is that there are RV parks all over the coastline of the Upper Peninsula. So mm -hmm. you can find amazing campsites right on the water, but also in the forest. It's just magical. So if you've been following along, you know that we are on a mission to visit all 50 states. We were gonna do it in 50 weeks, but we had some hangups, which we're not <laughs> gonna get into right now. So now it's like 150 weeks, whatever. <laughs> but we've managed to visit a few new states over the last month or so, and we keep getting so excited that we keep forgetting to do one very, very important thing. It's time for a good old fashioned Map scratching, y'all. How was it scratching off three <laughs> states? It's kind of a lot of work. I it? know, it's a lot of work. It felt pretty good though. Look how many more colors we have. Yeah. And sadly, our map was kind of like in the heat and kind of got a little rippled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six states in the book. Six states. And we left our big coin in Clementine, so we have a 10 peso coin. Still worked, <laughs> it's fine. See, it represents how we're world travelers, but we're traveling around the states. We're bringing it all together or something. Big 
This is Kitch Itty Kippy, also known as the Big Spring. And as you can see, it is this beautiful natural spring that's this majestic bluish green color and is completely crystal clear. Like you can see everything down in there. You can take this cool raft all the way across and back and get views straight down into the spring to the bottom. While the raft ride is free, you do actually have to pay either a $10 day fee or you have to get your Michigan Recreation Pass, which will let you into all the parks for free. So the way this spring works is rain and melted snow seep through the ground and then there are little, I guess kind of like fissures or little breaks in the ground underneath the spring where the water bubbles up. It's kind of sandy at the bottom so you get this really cool almost smoke looking effect where the water is coming up and feeding this amazing spring. Well it was super cool. Um, especially since in the middle of the raft they had this clear viewing area where you had the best view of like the fish and the dirt and the, just the clarity of the water. However, come right when they open because <laughs> I think right at like 10 15, 10 30, you get the first wave of people and then the raft is just full for the rest of the day, I imagine. Yeah, I, I also read that if you come in the afternoon, it's open until 8 p.m. So anytime after 6 apparently is also a good time. Yeah. For our next stop, we are headed out west to see even more of the UP. We are going to be doing our first real like off-grid experience in our camper back there. Yeah, and we got our little dash bear to guide us. Look at this little guy. <laughs> we might be bobblehead people now. Yeah, this little we'll bear see. has converted us. All right, UP, let's do it. We made it to our off-grid campsite. It's actually a harvest host, and we're being hosted by uh, a guy who runs like a off-roading park. He's got a thousand acres out here, uh, but he's just in a little ATV ahead of us, and he's showing us to our little uh, campsite for the night. Man, I wish we had land like this, you guys. I'm so freaking jealous. <laughs> I think a thousand acres would do. That's just about enough, yeah, right? But at least we get to enjoy it for the next couple days as if it were ours. <laughs> this campsite is pretty sweet, you guys. Oh, Check yeah. out our setup. We have our outside speaker, so we got Kimbra bumping while we're getting everything set up. Setup is all done, by the way. We got our stabilizers up. We don't have to hook up any hoses or electric because we're completely self-contained. If you stay here, you can uh, pay for an electric site, which is awesome. Yeah, they have these electric hookups right over there. Yeah, they also have Airbnbs. You can also stay in cabins. You can go off-roading. You can do it all. But we're going to stay in our little trailer right here in the middle of nature yeah. and hopefully see a moose or deer or something. Maybe a bear. I don't know. We have ventured further up the coast. We're actually at the northernmost city in Michigan. Mm -hmm. We made it, you guys, to Copper Harbor. Yeah, this town is so adorable, y'all. It just has one main street with a few little roads and houses off of it, but it sits, of course, on this amazing little harbor, and it has this pristine island in the middle. If you came here, you would think that no man has ever set foot on those <laughs> islands. Yeah, and there's a bunch of people paddleboarding out there, but uh, I can attest to the temperature of the water. Apparently, Lake Superior is very cold all year round, yes. and it is almost takes your breath away just putting your foot in it. <laughs> This is the Brockway Mountain Viewpoint, which is one of the top recommended things to do when you come to Copper Harbor. But every local that we talk to has been recommending so many different things that we don't know how to squeeze it all into this video. So I think we're gonna do this last little bit like our rapid fire speed dating so we can squeeze in as much as possible. First thing you gotta do is stop at Jamson's Bakery for coffee and a donut and a breakfast sandwich. This place is so pristine. It sits right on the water with incredible views behind you. There's not another soul out here. It's just the perfect way to take it in. And they make the most beautiful donuts I've ever seen. Oh my Look gosh. At that. <laughs> this is their homemade thimbleberry icing. So a thimbleberry is like a raspberry except bigger and more delicate. But they make the jam and the icing. They combine them and put it on a homemade donut. It might be heaven. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, mm. oh yeah. Perfection. Mhm. Mm All right, now back off. Don't, don't not even think about eating my donut. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Another nice little stop is Hunter's Point Park. It's this pristine pebble beach 
crystal clear waters, a nice little breeze, and you really feel like you're at the edge of the world out here. Yeah, this could easily be an ocean for sure. There is no land in sight. So cool. It trips me out that there are waves in these lakes. I don't know, it really feels like the ocean, but it's fresh water and I love it. Well, if you love it so much, get on in there. That's okay. I put my hand in there and now I can't feel anything because it's numb. <laughs> I'm really digging these pebble beaches because you can do stuff like this. Geez, you guys, I've never had quite so many rocks in my shoe before. <laughs> the Harvest Host we just stayed at recommended an off-roading adventure at the tip of the peninsula up here. So we decided, <laughs> why not go for it? I mean, hey, we got the vehicle for it. <laughs> we do, we got four by four on. We're going, baby. We actually looked this trail up on a trail uh, app and it said it's about a four or five out of 10. And usually it's a lot harder when it's raining. So I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I mean, our truck is beefy, right? Yeah, so far it's just rocks and a little bit of sand, nothing too bad. Yeah, we're just not that experienced off-roader. So we're trying to dip our toes into it. <laughs> but anyways, you gotta go about four or five more miles on this rough road. And then it should take us right out to the coast to a very secluded area that most people can't get to. So it's a bit of a hidden gem, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, Jeff's just rocking out here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he was made for. Okay. Also, his name is Jeff. I don't know if we said that. <laughs> yeah, little Jeff, our little black bear to match our little black series. We made it out to High Rock Bay. 100% worth the 30 minutes or so of bumpy road maybe to get out hour. here. <laughs> yeah, maybe an hour. Is this freaking slick or what? It's really not that busy and there's tons of campsites where you could pitch a tent. There's tons of tents over in that area. There's also a guy out here with an RV and people do bring RVs out here and you can literally park it anywhere here and this stay. This whole time Eric's like, we gotta come out here with the camper. We gotta come back out here with the camper, but. Yeah, we just already booked an RV site in town and we wanted to scope this out first. We don't really have time now, but man, can you I imagine know. our Black Series just sitting right here? Oh. Maybe one day we'll have to make a special trip back out here with that. And uh, we're definitely just gonna have to keep our eyes out for other cool off-road uh, camping spots like this. We'll find them for sure. Yeah, if you guys know any really sweet wild camping areas, preferably in really picturesque places, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we really want to uh, just like spend a week completely off grid in a place just like this. Mm -hmm. um, we just haven't been able to organize it or had the time just yet, but we will be doing it. We will be doing it soon. We will be. As soon as we get back from our Asia trip in a couple weeks, I think we're gonna be going hardcore on the uh, <laughs> adventures in the camper route. We just came back to our campsite just in time for sunset. It was really cool. Yeah. There's no clouds in the sky, so it was a different type of sunset. It was just the sun isolated in the sky, slowly going below the horizon. This place is aptly named Sunset Bay, and you get amazing sunsets here. Yeah, it's very nice. So we're gonna be linking to all the stuff we did, all the RV parks we stayed, some of the stuff we didn't get to do. We're gonna mm -hmm. be linking to all that in the description below, so definitely check it out. And if you're from Michigan or if you visit a lot, leave all your best tips and best places to go in the comments below. There's so much stuff, you guys, so to be honest. Much. We were a little disappointed that we just got so many recommendations and we just, this is all we could squeeze You'd in. You'd think a week would be enough. I mean, the peninsula is not that yeah. big, but there are just so many waterfalls, so many views of the water itself, so many hiking trails, so many campsites, so many everythings. Y'all, we can't stop looking at like how glowy we are in the screen for yeah. the camera. It's just it's really so cool. beautiful. The sun went down ages ago and just like the blue on the water and then like golden amber color on the horizon. You can enjoy sunset for an hour here. It's yeah. awesome. We got a bourbon drink calling our name, so. <laughs> yes, to end this trip, it's perfect. We're gonna just have a fire to campsite, a little bourbon drink. Oh. Michigan, you have outdone yourself. It has been amazing. We'll come back. For yes. Sure. Goodbye, adventures. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>